What's up, everybody? Dimebot here, and I am joined by the owner of Sanitarium.fm, Mr. Lone Samurai. Lone Samurai, how the hell are uh, you? Wait, where is he? Oh, me. Yeah, hi. Yes, that would be you, you idiot. <laughs> um, so, there's been a lot of discussion going around. In fact, on one of our streams the other night uh, with Mike Matrix and Toe, we actually discussed it a little bit with the kind of hero shooter genre that's becoming popular right now. And right now, we've got three main games in it with, uh, of course, Cliffy B's Lawbreakers coming up, which, by the way, everybody that was at PAX says Lawbreakers is actually really, really good. But uh, today we want to talk about Paladins by High res Studios, Heroes, or Heroes, Overwatch by uh, Blizzard, and Battleborn by 2K Games and Gearbox, the guys that made Borderlands. So all hero shooters, kind of similar, but all also very unique in their own ways, and kind of Talk about what we think about them, how they're similar, how they're different, and maybe give some opinions on maybe which one you should play. So we've played all three of them. Uh, I kind of know where Lone leans on them, but I'll let him explain. But first, let's kind of talk about like the hero shooter thing, Lone. So it's new. You have a champion. It's a first-person shooter. You have some uh, class-based abilities. And I kind of like it. It's a nice departure, even though I love arena shooters, from the old Unreal Tournament Quake Arena form. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's well. It, we've had it a long time, and I, I, I'll be the first to admit, I used to play a lot of Team Fortress as well, uh, Unreal Tournament, mm -hmm. Team Fortress, Quake um, Online, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's coming back to a true to form. Yeah, and you know, I think, and also I'll go ahead and preface this with um, two of the games that we're going to be talking about are technically not released yet. Uh, I regard Overwatch as pretty much finished. Yeah. This new beta is really just a giant stress test. And with Paladins, Paladins is a high-res game, and at least in their last couple games, it's hard to say when a high-res game is truly released, because they continually modify, innovate, and push forward on their game. So, you know, Smite was in beta forever, but it felt like a polished, finished game for most of that time. And I think, despite some uh, recent changes, Paladins is kind of in the same boat. It's really just adding characters and refining the gameplay right now. No. So... No. I, the thing is, I, I see it the opposite way of the three so far. Um, Paladins, I wasn't overly fussed by. Uh, it didn't, to me, it didn't feel like it, it was finished when we played it. Admittedly, I haven't played it recently. Uh, it's it's changed a fair amount. I mean, I will. It still has a lot of beta aspects to it, but the core of the game is there. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch, I think, really feels the same way to me in some ways. The core of the game is in. There's a lot of stuff missing. And then Battleborn is full release. And um, I want to kind of come to Battleborn maybe in the middle. But Battleborn feels really good. So Battleborn let's, is let's the talk first out of the trap, as it were, um, on the release yeah. schedule, yeah. So let's talk about Paladins. So Paladins takes place in kind of this mystical world where you have technology, steampunk technology, and magic all coexisting at the same time. And you've got characters like Barrick, who's a dwarf that builds a turret. And sounds, you know... A lot like Chorborn, Chor however you say his name, Chorborn uh, from Overwatch. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got your bow wielder, you've got your magic staff wielder, the big tank guy. Uh, Grover, which actually, Grover's kind of an in-joke for high-res fans because Grover is a giant tree that you play in Paladins and he has a big axe. But if you play Smite, Grover is also the tree that Sylvanas rides around on. And Sylvanas is a tank. So it's an interesting little cross that they've done there. But Paladins is a very, very fast game. I think out of the three of them, Paladins is probably the quickest in terms of movement. The tanks and Paladins move at the same speed as some of the assault characters in Overwatch. Really, you think so? Because actually, I, I felt to me, maybe it was the class I was playing, because you'd probably notice that I go for a similar style of gameplay when I'm getting into a game. Uh, you played Pip a lot. Yeah, I did play Pip a lot. I really enjoyed playing um, Pip. Um, yeah, it's it was quite fast paced, but they're all fast in their own way. I think is a different mm -hmm. way of putting it. Yeah, I just think in terms of raw movement speed, Paladin is one that feels the quickest to me. Yeah, I suppose like not ability, not especially pulling out your mount so quickly. Um, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I'd, fair enough. Yeah. Actually, that's a good thing to touch on. Paladins out of the three is the only one that any character can pull out their mount, which is a horse, or a flaming horse, at any given time unless you're taking direct damage, which makes map traversal incredibly quick. And Paladins also has some very cramped maps. 
Uh, a lot of the maps on Paladins are basically the size of Gibraltar from Overwatch. So high res has very much forced you, kind of like Blizzard has, to always be in the enemy's face. Like, there's always a fight going on in Paladins. There's no downtime. Yeah. A very little safe ground. No, not at all. In fact, some of the things that were frustrating us, they've patched out. They've put in some obstacles and some um, different little outcrops on the map that have drastically cut down on that situation where we couldn't even get out of our base because they just were spawn camping the shit out of us. But, yeah, but, well, that's possible in any of the games. As we proved last night, I don't know whether you've highlighted it, of course, but our little... It, it's going to be in there, but oh. we had a really bad time with a uh, with a Roadhog last night in Overwatch. Oh, no, I mean when we went six-man Bastion. That oh, was hilarious. and they walked out of their door and did just turned around and ran away. Yeah, that was, that was brilliant. But yeah, you, you can do it in all of the games, but the, the biggest thing with Paladins is you can do it in every base. Or hopefully they've actually mm. fixed that to a point. Um because at least they have, and you know they've um, they've added a couple different modes to Paladins as well. Paladins now has a payload mode, right? And uh, the payload actually, if you try to get near the base and payload until the payload's almost gotten there, because in Paladins the payload actually pushes from the enemy base into your base, basically. Right. And it's not a good idea to get near the enemy base. But uh, I think probably Paladins is the one that, even though I love it, I think it's probably the weakest out of the three. It's got the longest to go. I really like the character designs. Uh, high res is very good at it, and the card system differentiates it very well from the Yeah, others. I did quite enjoy that, to be honest. Uh, so, for those that aren't aware, Paladins incorporates a card system, and the way it works now is you build your deck, and you have a set number of points you can put into the deck. It's 12. That means if you want to run three legendary cards, you can, but you're not going to be running anything else, because they'll eat up all your points. And they've split the cards into different levels. So you can have, like, for Sky or Cassie, Cassie has an ability that lets her shoot a blast shot, which is an exploding arrow. And now an ability like that might have three levels, and each one costs more, but also has a significantly greater effect as you go up the levels. So every time you level up in Paladins, you get to pull a card. And that card can drastically change your kit. The closest analogy out of the games we're talking about is Battleborn's Helix system, where you get to augment your skills. And it's, it's an interesting game changer because building the decks allows you to tailor your hero and then really have some fun with the cards. You can do some really evil things with cards. You can do. But I, the one thing that there is actually a drawback to that, and the, this is one that I found, is I'm not... And it, it's the case with all uh, TCGs as well, so Hearthstone or whatever. Uh, when it comes to building decks, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. I like a straight... Here's my character. This is its loadout. Job done. Let's go shoot. Um, which we'll talk about later with Overwatch. But um, and even to a point, um, Battleborn as well. But it's one thing I couldn't. I, I still find difficult with Paladins now is the whole building the best decks and that sort of thing. And coming from the MMO community, I know very much that there's someone always going to be the uh, theory crafting the best loadout for each character. And then when a patch oh, they comes, are. they'll be looking at it and changing it. I, uh, I think the thing that Paladin's high res is doing to kind of not combat that, but make it easier to wrap your head around is they now have suggested decks that they built for yeah. you. Uh, and then they you can also have up to three, I believe, uh, custom decks. And the nice thing about the custom decks is, you know, I've got mine labeled. So, like, for example, for Sky, who's the assassin character, I have a deck that is my payload deck, and it is focused around sneaking in, doing damage from behind, getting my poison abilities off and getting the hell out. Yeah. But for the regular match where you are capturing the point, summoning the siege cannon and assaulting the enemy base, I have just a straight up damage deck that is built around being in their face with her and just killing everything. So they've kind of just kind of given you a loadout system now, basically where you customize a deck for a role that you want to fill based on how you're going in. And you take that with you. And there's only five cards in the deck max. I think I get what you're saying, but I think they're trying to do their best to address that concern, which is something High Res is good at. They've done it consistently with Smite, and I see no reason that they won't do it with Paladins. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Paladins may be the weakest of them. It's a lot of fun. The characters have a ton of style, and it runs like an absolute dream. I, I wouldn't it's say the, the most graphically. I'd say it's the um, the more hardcore. Yeah, it is also free to play. Yes. 
Um, I guess it is kind of more hardcore. It has a lot of people from the Smite community in it, and it's extremely competitive. Yeah, and I, the reason I say it's the more hardcore, will actually, I'll explain that as we go through from my perspective. Um, Dime's more, he plays more of these games than I do. I'm more of the MMO player, but I used to play first-person shooter deathmatch, which is why, where I come from on this level, you'll see where I'm coming from by the time we get to Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paladins is very much a very brutal game in terms of the competition. Um, has a great art style, runs very well. I do like that. High res is pretty good at making really memorable characters. Yeah. And not only that, all three of these games run smooth as silk. Yeah, that's the best thing. Like Lawbringers or Lawbreakers, kind of. I'm sure it'll run well because it's Cliffy B, but it is easily the most beautiful of them because it's straight up Unreal Four, and you know that Cliffy B knows how to do Unreal Four. No. Yeah. But uh, let's move on to Battleborn. Um, so Battleborn just came out, and Battleborn is kind of a unique hybrid in this situation. It's pretty easy to pick up and play a la Overwatch, but if you want Battleborn to be hardcore as hell, Battleborn can be hardcore yeah, as hell. Yeah, definitely. And it, for that exact reason as well, it's also the, the middle ground of this for me as well. Um, because just like um, Paladins has the card system, um, Battleborn, and I'm sure you're about to mention this, Battleborn has an equipment section, which I usually find quite difficult in, uh, especially with um, MOBAs, I find quite difficult to wrap my head around sometimes about what the best loadout is. Admittedly, you don't need to do it in-game, it's pre before, but I, I find it very difficult working out a loadout, um, which more difficult when it's cards, but still quite difficult when it's items. Um, yeah, I I think Battleborn actually succeeds in this regard, though. This is one thing I like, and I've done both playstyles myself. Uh, so, Battleborn, you, you equip a loadout, three pieces of gear. Now, you have to equip the gear outside of a match. And once you go into a match, you can spend shards. You constantly earn shards, just you rack them up over time very slowly, or you can shatter them on the map and get them, or you can kill enemies or do objectives thing though is you use those to either build turrets or like accelerators different emplacements around the map or you can spend them to activate equipment the interesting thing that gearbox has done with battleborn is that if lone plays and he doesn't want to fuss with activating his gear he can instead spend all his shards to summon extra minions and upgrade things around the map to help out yeah. the team and that will actually give him experience whereas if I'm on the same team and I don't want to do all that I could choose to go on a killing spree and shatter all the shards around the map and power up my equipment and get a quick uh, power spike out of that so they've created an interesting hybrid system that actually allows you to play the enemy players or play the map and be viable both ways it's it's strange that rather than going from a DPS, I found myself in Battleborn actually playing more of a support role, um, going on the the offensive, uh, but to get to emplacements so that I can either um, create a turret or get a um, the the flying thing. Oh, what was it called? Um, the minion things coming on. Oh, the yeah, yeah. You know. But the the nice thing about that though is like even doing that, not going completely inoffensive, you had a significant impact on the yeah. match. Yeah, because I I could get the turrets going, but I could also back you up when you got yourself into hot water, or as I'm putting something up, you can defend me, and then I can turn around as soon as my the turrets up and help you DPS. And it's strange; it's the first game I found myself in an active support role. Yeah, and it feels good in Battleborn. I'm impressed by the fact that they managed to make both playstyles work yeah. and not have one feel more viable than the other. Uh, the thing that's interesting about Battleborn is, to a certain extent, all three of these games have both ranged heroes and melee heroes. But, you know, with Paladins, we're talking about 14 champions, Overwatch, 21 heroes, and Battleborn, 25 Battleborn. But Battleborn's roster is probably the most diverse. You've got some really insane things, like Caldarius, who is a robot that can... His ult, he flies up in the air and can smash down. But, you know, he carries a, a machine gun, a one-handed machine gun, and his left arm is an energy blade. So you could dash in, light somebody up in the face with the uh, TMP, and then slash to finish them off. Or you have straight-up melee characters like Wrath, who's basically a space Sith. Yeah. And... 
all of them work. It's it's really interesting. Or Phoebe, who's that chick that we hate that floats around with the five uh, radiators. Yep. I hate yep. her. I love playing her, but uh, god damn it, do I hate fighting that bitch. <laughs> um, Battleborn, to me, is probably the most unique entry in this particular little list we're talking about because it just has this ridiculous style. Absolutely insane style. It's actually a problem that some people have had with the game. Like, the game in motion looks like a crayon factory exploded. Yes. Actually, funny enough, that, that's one of the things that Scarlet Dragon mentioned, was that while I was playing it, just a brief glimpse at my monitor started to give her a bit of a headache. Because, it, yeah, crayon factory exploding is probably a good analogy for it. Now, I will say that they've done a good enough job that after a few rounds, you start to get used to it and you see through the chaos. Yeah. But... A casual bystander walking by and looking at Battleborn is going to wonder how the hell you know what's going on. Yeah, and that's even people who uh, have played a lot of Borderlands. Because, of course, this is Borderlands. Mm -hmm. Let's be fair. Kind of. Um, I th and I'll even say that like when I'm playing like a melee hero like Wrath, sometimes in the middle of a battle, I have like the battle will finish up like a giant team fight, and I'll be looking around like, where the hell am I? Yeah. Because you just get... Things go so crazy, but... Uh, Battleborn's leveling up system, I think, is probably also very unique. Um, you know, Overwatch and Paladins don't really have a skill leveling system. Paladins has got the cards, and Overwatch is Overwatch. But Battleborn, your abilities are static, but every time you level up, you can pull up the Helix and augment it with one of two, or as, if you've progressed the character far enough, one of three different mutations that will do something different to your abilities and change the fundamental way they work. Thorn, for example, an archer character. Yes, I love my archer characters. Um, now, Thorn has a scatter shot with her bow, and one of her augments is you can either choose to have it fire an extra two arrows in a wider arc, or you can bring the arc closer back together and only fire three, but they all do more damage when they impact. So, you know, basically, scatter shot area effect, or three really hard hits on a single target like Montana, the chain gun guy. Like, you're going to hit him with all three of those. Yeah. And I like that because it takes it takes the complexity of do I level this skill or this skill that you might find in something like Smite or League out of it, like knowing the optimal order to level skills. But every time you level, it allows you to respond to how the battlefield's changing by picking an augment that can let you more effectively fight. But I think I think you had a harder time with uh, Battleborn than some of the others. So why don't you talk about I, that? I did it first when I got first got into the game. Admittedly, um, it was very early. There was I didn't because I jumped in in the beta and there wasn't actually the tutorial that there was. In fact, actually um, jumping into the main game and then being forced to play the prologue as well actually felt kind of annoying because I'd already figured out how to play. But um, but the tutorial was so well done. Yes, it was. It was brilliantly done, and it had a brilliant story which took you through it which was a really nice touch but when I started playing I didn't I played on my own at first and I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing it felt like I was playing a scripted well I, I technically was but a scripted MOBA sequence with only AI against me but then when I joined Dime playing it it felt like a very different beast um, and since then because I pl I've played it again single player I've gotten more into it um, but not as much as I have Overwatch. Yeah, Battleborn definitely requires more of a time commitment. Yeah. Uh, I love the fact that Battleborn has a single-player campaign or a co-op campaign that you can play through. Yeah. It's, it's fun, it's interesting, and there's incentives to play it because you play it on different difficulty levels or go for different record times, and it rewards you every time you play with loot and with characters. Like it's Battleborn's constantly giving you stuff. Yeah. It, it's a shooter loot uh, game. It is, it is. Uh, and the multiplayer, like, you can get the experience Lynn was talking about where you're fighting against AI in the in the single-player campaign. The multiplayer gets a little crazier because you have the waves of minions that are coming in, but you also have the enemy Battleborn, the other players. And it has some really interesting modes. Uh, Meltdown, it has a basic capture the point. You have three points, you have to go dominate them. It's very cut and dry. It's my least favorite mode because I don't like it in any other game either. It can be fun for a quick little, you know, warm-up, but not something I'm going to play a lot. It definitely feels the weakest. Meltdown. Meltdown's probably my favorite mode, even though it's not the most complex or original, just because it's hilarious. So, Meltdown, you have 
a map with two bases on either side and basically two lanes in a middle area. And you have these giant sentient furnaces that think they're gods. And you have to escort your little minions down the lane into the, your furnace, which is on the other side of the enemy's furnace. The lanes are diametrically opposed. And every time you get minions into it, your score will go up. You're playing to 500 points. And the furnace will literally eat the minions. It looks like a giant evil demon face. And it will say the most ridiculous shit. I think I had one the other night where it was like, be reborn as hubcaps! And you're just like, what? But it's got those nice little heartbacks. It's one thing that um, Scarlet, actually, as you were just mentioning that um, and talking through it, um, the first thing she's immediately thought about is lemmings. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Meltdown to me, like, it's not the most original mode in the, mo in the world. Basically, it's a giant PvP escort mission. But... It's hilarious, and the fighting that breaks out is insane. Especially because the minions fight back. Like, they're not just cannon fodder. They can wreck you. Yeah. Uh, and then Incursion, I think, is probably... I've played the most Incursion. You haven't played a ton of it. Incursion is... How would you describe Incursion? Um, to be honest, like you said, I've not played as much. So um, it would be very difficult for me to explain it very well. And Incursion is kind of like the old Siege mode from Unreal Tournament. A MOBA and Quake Arena all had a drunken, like, one-night threesome. It's it's weird to describe. Yeah. You, have a, you have a base with a sentry robot, and then outside that, a little area with another sentry robot. Multiple paths around the side of that that converge back into a giant middle area, and then mirror that for the enemy base. And then off to either side, you have these mercenary camps if you kill the minions in there you can summon them to come fight or contract them to come fight for you and they're really powerful and that sounds very moba -y until you realize that in mobas a lot of the um a lot of the gameplay is farm the minions in the wave and then take the tower and fight the enemy you know in that sequence in battleborn everything just kind of in incursion everything just kind of crashes together in that middle area in this giant mess of violence yeah. Constantly for half an hour. Yeah, it, it, and that's the other thing. Like you mentioned, the half hour point. It, it does. It feels like a, a long time as well. When we were playing that match the other night, it did feel like it was going on for a little while as well. Because, but then again, there was also a lot of back and forth as well, which was good. Yeah, it's not the one-sided stomps you get. It's. We should also point out that all three of these games. One thing that I really love about them, um, and it's something that I, it's the reason I don't play Conquest and Smite, and the reason I never wanted to play Dota or League, because matches in those games can go forever. Yeah. Paladins, Overwatch, and Battleborn, there are all hard time limits on the match. When the counter hits zero, somebody's going to win, unless you do the uh, <laughs> the frickin' overtime exploit in, ba in uh, Overwatch. Well, I don't really think it's an exploit. I, I think it's actually meant to be there to give you a chance to take it back and actually turn the match around. Well, no, I mean, like, the like I've seen, like, watched on stream matches before where the enemy team has kept it in overtime for, like, 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, there is, a, yeah. Like, yeah. But that's one thing I like. When you play, when you settle in for a Meltdown match or a game of Paladins or a game of, Battle, or a game of Overwatch, you know how long you're going to yeah, play. Yeah, definitely. So that's why I could never do League or Dota. I can't, you know, it's harder to block out a solid hour of game time than it is 15 yeah. minutes. Um, I think I think Battleborn has a lot to recommend it. It's certainly unique. The characters are hilarious, and I like the combat system. Even Lone, who's not big into that kind of game, like we were talking about after our first beta stream, we're like, this game feels really good. Yeah. And let's move on to the last one. This is the one that Lone loves the most, and the one that. I kind of had the most issues with, but I still love, which is Overwatch. Mm. In fact, I'll put it this way. I've played more Overwatch with you in the last week than I have Battleborn. Mm -hmm. um, which actually says quite a lot. Um, you weren't sure about it, but we didn't notice we were on stream for the best part of three hours last night. No. Which also says oh. a lot about the game, that we were so hard, so quickly thrumming through matches that we didn't even notice what time it was. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, my biggest problem with Overwatch is the lack of game modes. And because when it boils down to it, Overwatch has two game modes and then a mode that combines the two of them. Yeah. I'm quite sure Blizzard will fix this. They're not done. There's more coming, just like yeah. Over yeah. Just like 2K has said, there's more modes coming for Battleborn, which I'm 
really interested in because the modes that are two modes that are in are already freaking insane. I want to know what else they have mm-hmm. cooking. But uh, Overwatch basically boils down to payload or capture the point or capture the point and then push the payload. Yeah. Uh, a thing I like about Overwatch is, I, I guess, the simplicity. Like, the game looks great, runs great, and feels absolutely great. The characters are awesome. Uh, second best character, to, well, absolutely the best character design. I think Battleborn rivals it in a lot of ways with the personality of the characters. Yeah. Um, it's just a fun game. I know that's like a cop-out saying, but that's really the best way to put it. Overwatch is just pure fun. Yeah, well, as I was saying earlier as well, it's like, you know, you've got Paladins, which to me is the most hardcore because of the, the card system and the theory crafting that could potentially go into it. And then you've got Battleborn, which has the gear, but you don't have to use the gear, so it's kind of newbie-friendly, but um, you can bust out quick matches, or it can go on for a while. And then you've got Overwatch, which is just a typical Blizzard Nice and simple, straight to the case, boom, there you go, you're into a match, let's play the game, here's your loot, thanks very much. And mm-hmm. But on the flip side, and the word of caution, because we've seen it happen already, the same thing happened with Heroes of the Storm. It's a MOBA that I can actually enjoy because it's quick and easy and they don't have to worry about the loadouts and your equipment and all that jazz. But how, could it potentially go too simple and not have enough people because they want to build it as an eSport but it's too simple to become an eSport and nobody cares about it. I don't think Battleborn, or Battleborn, Overwatch is going to have that problem. I think there's enough complexity there. And especially, uh, an important note is, with the two games we talked about previously, Paladins and Battleborn, once you choose your character at the beginning of a match, you're locked yeah. in. Overwatch, one of the things I do appreciate about Overwatch is the ability to... You know, we've talked about in Paladins and in Battleborn the ability to respond to a developing situation on the battlefield by in Paladins, choosing your cards, or in Battleborn, changing the way you're playing the map, or choosing your augments. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch makes it much more simpler than that. We did it last night. Uh, we went all Bastion, and they responded by changing up their team comp to have three Widowmakers to snipe us. And we responded by switching out of our Bastions and going back into a more balanced team that could handle the threat. Yeah. So, Overwatch, you don't change your loadout, you change your hero. And that's quite good as well, because it also means as well that if we're, as you said, if we're in a situation where um, where there's six bastions coming at us and holding us in our area, we can switch to something like a few Widowmakers to clear them out and open that area again so that we can actually make our way out. And then we jump into, like uh, Mike Matrix was doing last night, he started as... um, uh, Reinhold, so that he could actually do some tanking and pushing forward, and then once we actually had the middle ground open and they were starting to push their uh, their area, he jumped into Farah and started raining fire and brimstone down on the uh, the whole battlefield. It, it was yeah. brilliant change, and well, that's why he got MVP as well. <laughs> yeah, it was a great match. Um, but I like that fact about Overwatch. You know. In a bad situation, just grab a different hero and change up the entire, you know, makeup of the battlefield. Yeah. And it's so easy to jump in and out of the heroes. Um, there are some that, you know, certainly I don't click with very well. Like, I suck with Roadhog. Um, but, you know, somebody that, you know, is good with Roadhog. Like, I was playing Tracer last night, and I got killed, and I happened to die right by Lone. And he's standing there in cover by a doorway. And as I'm falling down on the death cam, I suddenly see Roadhog's hook come out of the door and jerk Lone back into the door. Well, what actually happened is he was jerking me in. You came out, took the shot that was aimed at me. No, no, no. This was no. This was a different play. Oh, it was a different play. But th- then that was that same Roadhog in that same point. You took a shot that he had um, lined up for me with his chain. So I could actually and I instantly and died because I was Tracer. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Uh, uh, but, but I like that about Overwatch, just the quickness yeah, of it. Like Overwatch it. is very quick, very simple to pick up. It's it's the fastest playing one out of one of them uh, besides Paladins. Yeah. But also the fact that you can do some uh, fun, silly things like start the game as six bastions and stuff like yeah. that. Even though it says, "Oh, your team mix up," it, and it gives you um, hints for your team as well, which is really useful. But it, it, yeah. it's telling you this team isn't balanced but then you can have the fun and we noticed as well when we did that 
the two guys who were already Bastion, we then picked Bastion for fun, and the sixth one picked up on what we were doing without us having to say anything and picked Bastion as well. And we all worked as yeah, a cohesive we, team. We all started dying laughing too. It was great. Uh, there's So we kind of wrap up some thoughts here. Uh, there's a lot of positives about all three of these games. Like, make no mistake, like all three of these games are really yeah. fun. They're a blast to play. And the main kind of thrust of this is the reason we've been talking about them in depth is a lot of people have been saying oh, Paladins and Battleborn are just, you know, versions of Overwatch that aren't as good. I don't think anything could be further from Very the much so, and mainly because of the fact all three of these games have been in... And also there, there are other games also as well that we've been playing recently, like um, the, the one from Epic whose name I can't remember right now. Paragon, the one that none of us yeah. like. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You liked it at first, but then you went off it a little bit. I didn't get on with it straight away. But even so, these games have all been in development at the same time. Um, and it's a typical cop-out from people who don't really know what they're talking about, saying, oh, they're, they're just copying such and such. They aren't. These are old-school games that are making a resurgence because of eSports. They just happen that three or four of them have released basically the same type of game with their own yeah. issues they at the same th time. They all three share the same basic DNA of their first-person shooters where you play characters that have abilities. Yeah. Once you get past that, the modes, the way that the mechanics work, and the way that those heroes are actually made more powerful or less powerful in the game are all completely yeah. different. Paladins, Paladins is going to have an esports scene. It's inevitable with high res doing it, the creators of Smite, and you can see that DNA in yeah. the game. It's built around, as Lone has said, the theory crafting, the min-maxing of power, the optimization. It is built around that. It is going to, if it survives, which I think it will, uh, is going to be the hardcore one. It's extremely fast-paced, it's brutal, the time to kill is insanely quick. Uh, Pal uh, Battleborn? Battleborn is very much middle of the road, casual or hardcore, long time to kill. It can take a long time to kill somebody in Battleborn. Yeah, but on the flip side as well, uh, you could then uh, myself and the dragon could, if we want to just play something together, we could play that together mm -hmm. uh, co-op or even just against each other. But mostly co-op and play it like we were playing old school Borderlands. And then Overwatch, simple to play, quick, to, you know, a lot of fun. So I think if we want to talk about like which ones did you play, I think you should probably consider... I wouldn't call them negatives, but the the not like outright positive aspects. It depends game. more so, how you play a game like this. Yeah, if you want to go super hardcore, grab Paladins. If you want something that has single player and multiplayer, really wacky game modes, an incredible sense of humor, and it's just straight up, just balls fun to play, grab Battleborn. And if you want, like I'm gonna do, something that's really fun to play, great characters, you can pick up, play a couple matches, and then hop out to one of the others. Grab Overwatch. Yep. I think all three deserve everybody's playtime, but you got to make the decision on your own. This was just meant to kind of break them down and give you guys some ideas of what is actually going on and why it's not a fair comparison to say that they're all just clones. Yeah. And we'll be playing more of them on stream. I'm oh, yeah, sure. definitely. But we'll also be playing a lot more of the other two as well. Um, so it, it's, yeah, keep an eye out. We'll definitely be streaming a lot more. Of course, we've got, um, well... More than likely, just a, uh, when we're doing our charity live streams, we'll w want to play different ones, won't we? Oh yeah, absolutely. We have like three really good games to play for the birthday stream this yep. year. So, um, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. Just kind of a discussion about what we think about these three games, uh, and yeah, keep it locked on my channel or on the Sanitarium.fm, depending on where you're watching this video. Uh, the Sanitarium video will be out first because I'm just nice like that. <laughs> so yeah, Lone, thanks for joining. And me. welcome and thanks very much. Yep. See you Take next it time. Easy.